This one guy transformed his boring, repetitive, low-paying job into a content goldmine of unlimited potential. And get this, he didn't actually start making any kind of serious money until he offered his services completely for free. Today we're gonna take a look at the rising phenomenon of free lawn mowing content. I bet you didn't think I was gonna go there, huh? We're gonna take a look at how this genre came to absolutely dominate YouTube from the shadows and what we can all learn from it. And you might wanna stick around to the end to see how someone else has already taken this concept further than you can imagine. <laughs> Visually satisfying content, commonly known as oddly satisfying, is a gigantic niche, not just on YouTube, but on every social media platform. I mean, just look at this video of someone coloring a piece of wood that has a dog drawn on it. Is it the best drawing of a dog you've ever seen? No, but did the flawless coloring push it to 150 million views? Yes, it did. Professor Robert Colombo of Eastern Illinois University has reportedly studied the phenomenon, concluding that watching these types of videos causes the release of serotonin and dopamine in the brain, putting the viewer in a state of happiness and positivity. In other words, we like watching things that just make sense from a visual standpoint, whether that's a compilation of flawless basketball shots, time-lapse videos of intricate cake decorations, or kinetic sand being sliced with precision, they all elicit the same response from the most basic and primitive parts of our brain. The same chemicals, by the way, also fire up when you learn to do something new. And with Brilliant.org, who is kindly sponsoring this channel, you can explore a wide variety of lessons, making topics like math or computer science easy to understand. What's really great about their platform is that it has a gamified feeling to it, making for an engaging and interactive experience. Upon signing up, Brilliant personalizes the lessons based on your proficiency level through a few tailored questions. As you delve into the interactive challenges and puzzles, you'll find yourself learning effortlessly. It's an enjoyable and stimulating platform, particularly beneficial for visual learners like myself. And you can try Brilliant completely free for a full 30 days by visiting brilliant.org slash Andrei Tserba. That's A-N-D-R-E-I-T-E-R-B-E-A. -E -E the first 200 of you will also get an additional 20% off of your annual premium membership. The moment you try it, it will probably become your new favorite activity on your journey as a lifelong learner. Thanks to Brilliant for sponsoring us. Now let's get back into our video. As far as studying goes, one person who has definitely studied the oddly satisfying niche and found a way to hack the YouTube algorithm is Spencer B, founder of the SB Mowing channel. Now I don't know about you, but for some time now my YouTube feed has been filled with this guy's shorts where he just goes knocking on people's doors asking if he can mow their lawns for free. How are you, sir? Good, how are you? Good. I saw your lawn was getting a little bit long. Uh -huh. I offered to do it for free to help you out. Uh, yeah, I'm down. Does that work? Does. So what is it that makes his content so bingeable? Because essentially every single one of his shorts follow the exact same formula. He knocks on the door, owner is confused at first but eager to accept a free makeover, followed by a time lapse of how he actually mows the lawn. And he gets dozens of millions of views on these videos. Alright, what you doing this spot? I clean these up for free. What seems to very much work in SB Mowing's favor is simple human psychology. A study from 2004 came up with the concept of mirror neurons, which apparently fire both when an individual performs an action, for example physically mowing their own lawn, and when they observe someone else perform the same action, i.e. watching a video of someone else mowing a stranger's lawn. So in other words, when you watch SB Mowing clean up someone's messy front yard, your brain gets a feeling of accomplishment as if you had done it yourself. So the demand is obviously there, and Spencer B figured out that all he needs to do is provide the content. Since people don't always keep a tidy lawn, there is an unlimited supply of lawns to be cut and the free incentive for the owners guarantees unlimited content for the creator. All the while, YouTube ad revenue at that scale pays much better than the income he would normally get just by doing the job the regular way. It's a win-win-win scenario that would have been impossible to take place 20 years ago. <laughs> It is noteworthy that SB Mowing is not the first channel to do this, but it is by far the biggest, with 3 million subscribers on his largest channel and getting anywhere between 30 to 60 million views each month, not even counting his secondary channel and accounts on other social media platforms. So this got me thinking, why exactly did this channel get as big if it wasn't the first? And is there a lesson to be learned here? So I went and studied SB Mowing's competitors, of which there are many, by the way, and I came across another channel called Tim the Lawnmower Man 
Japan, currently at 273,000 subscribers. Which is also impressive, by the way, for a lawn mowing channel, but nowhere near SP Mowing's size. This person does the same concept, but in one of his videos he talks about how he's not going to put all of his effort into it because it's just for a video. The standard I'm trying to get it to is not the standard that you'd be trying to get it to um, if you were being paid I don't know, 100 bucks to do this. So we just try and make it look as good as possible. Now it's important to know that I have no idea what these people are like in real life. The lawnmower man may very well be a selfless person and SB Mowing might not be as genuine as he appears in his videos. What they're like behind the scenes is none of my business. I'm merely comparing the two from a branding and marketing standpoint. Although the smaller channel appears to be more sincere by talking about their thought process, the larger channel does none of that and instead focuses all of its content on always going the extra extra mile, appearing to be warm and genuine, which is how SB Mowing has positioned himself in a very favorable light. A cognitive science study from 2007 explains the very phenomenon happening here, revealing that, and I quote, people perceived as warm and competent elicit uniformly positive emotions and behavior, whereas those perceived as lacking warmth and competence elicit uniform negativity. So in other words, if you simply appear to have a warm personality, you will have a much higher chance of, say, converting casual viewers into recurring hardcore fans, which perfectly sums up how SP Mowing has managed to differentiate himself from his many competitors. <laughs> So this free lawn mowing phenomenon has been garnering a lot of interest and these channels are reaping the rewards at a massive scale. A normal solo lawn mowing business reportedly earns around thirty to $40,000 a year after taxes and expenses in the United States. By taking a leap of faith and working for free, however, it's very likely that such a channel at SB Mowing scale has a consistent ad revenue that's up to 10 times higher than what they would have actually charged. And that's just for fixing small lawns on a daily basis. How about little literally buying up an entire abandoned town and making content around rebuilding it over the course of multiple years. Well, that's exactly what Brent Underwood has done. In 2018, he bought the abandoned mining town of Cerro Gordo and made a YouTube channel documenting his process of restoring it and even building a hotel from scratch where he hopes to attract visitors when it's finished. For most people, that would sound like an insane project, especially when you consider the purchase cost him $1.5 million and he has reportedly not made any any direct income, at least not from the town itself. But once again, just like in the case of lawn mowing content, people enjoy watching the process of rebuilding the town. So his YouTube channel now has over one and a half million subscribers. He's written a book about it and his entire brand revolves around this once abandoned mining ghost town. When asked why he does what he does, Underwood said, people forget that there's comfort in long-term goals. Many people who start businesses these days do it with the goal of selling them in a few years. There's longevity to what I'm doing here. I could work on this project for the rest of my life. And once again, we see how the story behind it is much more interesting than the thing itself. A messy lawn is not that interesting, but cleaning it up for free creates a whole new business model. An old town on its own may not exactly be riveting, but someone who documents bringing it back to life can generate unlimited viewership potential. Seth Godin is known for saying that, and I quote, marketing is no longer about the stuff that you make, but about the stories you tell. Storytelling, therefore, takes a video beyond its regular form of just entertainment. It creates a medium where communities can come together in shared appreciation of a specific thing. But storytelling also comes with negative potential as well. And if you want to see how humans have come up with stories throughout history, although this time in a much more gruesome way, click up here to watch my next video on this exact topic. As always, thank you for watching and we'll see you again real soon.